everyone! In this video tutorial, I will show you how I set up the lighting in my projects. Let me show you first the final render we will get. In this specific project, I have used a V-Ray Sun, V-Ray Lights below the shelves, and V-Ray IES below the pendants. Let me go back to my 3ds Max file. If I try to render now, I will get a black image. That's because we currently have no lights in our scene. Let's start adding them. I always start with the sun. Go to the command panel, click on the create panel and then lights. Click on the standard button and select V-Ray. Click on V-Ray Sun from the object type rollout. Go to the top view. Click to place the sun, drag your cursor and leave it where you want to place the target. In the V-Ray Sun pop-up window, I click the option Yes. This way, V-Ray automatically adds a gradient blue background in our project. Later on, we can go and replace it or adjust it. Click on the Select and Move command. Right-click in the front view and elevate the sun. Let's hit the Render button. As I've said before, I do all my testing using clay renders. If you don't know what a clay render is and how to produce one, please check my video clay renders using 3D Studio Max and V-Ray. Instead of the black image we were getting before, we can now see our interior. But we don't really see the sun casting its shadows. That may depend on the material we apply to our glasses. I usually choose to exclude my windows from the sun and let me show you what do I mean by that. Let me switch to a perspective view. I will zoom out so that I can see my scene and if I click here you can see that this layer is called glass. I will now select my sun, go to its parameters and at the very bottom I will click on the exclude button. Select the layer glass from the list on the left. Click the right arrow and move this layer to the list on the right and click OK. Let's go back to the camera viewport and hit the render button. Now you can see the sunlight coming in our room. Our render may look overexposed, but don't worry. As we said in the camera setup video tutorial, click on the Show Corrections Control button in the V-Ray Frame Buffer window. Adjust the Highlight Burn value. And if needed, also adjust the Exposure. If we take a close look at the shadows, we will see that they are very sharp, very defined. It's almost like a perfect line. I prefer my shadows to look smoother. To do so, I will select the sun, go to the Modify tab and adjust the size multiplier. The higher the value, the smoother our shadows will be. I will try 7 and re-render. As in the real world, the position of the sun affects the position of the shadows, the warmth and the brightness of our render. So, if I set the sun higher, not only the shadows will change, but also the intensity of the light will increase. While if I set the sun lower, you can see the feeling we get. The light here is not as strong as it was before. Many of you ask me where you should be placing the sun. 
Well, there are two options here. One is based on its actual location, and this means based on where is the north of your project. The second option, which is the one I am following, is to place it where it complements your render. In this project, I have windows on the right side and at the back. I chose to place the sun on the right side and at an average height so that I would create this contrast on my headboard. You can set your sun lower and this way you would illuminate the headboard more evenly. So, in this sense, it's totally up to you and to the result you want to achieve. That's all guys with the VDA Sun for this project. Let's now analyze the LED lights that we want to place below the shelves. Go to the command panel, click on the create panel and then lights. Click on V-Ray light from the object type rollout. Go to the top view, zoom in to see the shelves. Click, drag your cursor and leave it to create the LED light. Click on the Select and Move command, right-click in the left view and elevate the light to place it below the shelf. We placed one of the lights and now we want to copy this light below the other shelves. With your light selected, click on the Shift button in your keyboard and drag your light. You can see that a copy of your light is created. On the Clone Options pop-up window, select Instance, so that any changes you will do to one of the lights, it will automatically apply to the other lights as well. Repeat this process to place the LED lights on the remaining shelves. Let's hit the Render button. If you zoom in, you will see that we can see the shape of the lights. And by shape, I mean this bright rectangular. If you don't want the shape to be visible, select one of the lights, go to its parameters, go to the options rollout and enable invisible. Contrary to my sun, I like to have warm lights for my artificial lighting. So in the mode option, I will click on color and select temperature and then type 3500 Kelvin. Let me render again. I am now good with my V-Ray lights, so I am ready to move on to the V-Ray IES lights. Go to the command panel. Click on the Create panel and then Lights. Click on V-Ray IES from the object type rollout. Go to the front view. Zoom in to the pendant. Click to place the light, drag your cursor and leave it to place the target. Go to the top view. Select the light and its target and move it to the right position. Make an instance of this light and move it to the second pendant. Select one of the IES lights and go to its attributes in the Modify panel. Click on the None button and select the IES file. I will scroll down and select temperature and set it to 3500 Kelvin as I did with my V-Ray lights before. I want all my artificial lights to have the same temperature. Let's render. The way our sun is casting light on the headboard panel doesn't really allow us to see the IES lights, so for this example, let me change the direction of the sun and re-render my scene. Let me now adjust the position of my IES lights and my V-Ray lights. 
and I will also disable the invisible option of the V-Ray lights to show you one more thing here. In the V-Ray frame buffer, click the Open Lens Effect settings. Enable the glare effect and play around with the weight and size depending on the result you would like to achieve. I will now show you one more thing that I like to do in my renders and be prepared, it is kind of irrational. I randomly put IES lights at places where I want to create some highlights. And let me be more specific. If we take a closer look at the accessories in ourselves, they look a bit um, dull. And although I have the LED lights behind these accessories, I am not 100% satisfied by the lighting these objects receive. What I'm going to do is to put some V-Ray IES lights targeting each one of these objects to create some highlights on them. So, let's copy this light from here over here. Make another instance. And we're good for now. Let's do a crop render to see how they look. I will reduce the intensity of these lights since I want them only to serve as highlights. I know that this technique doesn't really make any sense because you should only be placing lights where you have a light source, but I'm more interested sometimes in creating, let's say, an interesting render instead of an accurate one. Let's also see once again the final version of this project. That's all with the light setup of this project. I hope this video answered some of your questions. Please keep in mind that although it is not difficult to put lights in our projects, what is difficult is to achieve a nice lighting balance and this just requires a lot of testing. What I would advise you to do is what I also do. Don't put all your lights in at once and then start adjusting them, but start with the natural light of your scene, adjust it properly and then keep adding one light at a time. You can't go wrong with this process. Feel free to share with me any questions you might have at this point. Thank you so much for watching.